tell us just about that heart-wrenching decision that you made in regards to your daughter? Because I know that had to be... Yeah. yeah. I was trying to tell myself that if I'm not okay, yeah. if I'm not good, then I cannot be the best mom to you. Yeah. And I was going through such a hard time that I knew the most unselfish thing that I could do yeah. was to make that hard decision and just try to work on myself. How old was your daughter when you made that decision? She was almost three and it wasn't fully my decision. Oh, wow. In fact, I didn't even know it was happening until Whoa. Oh. she was already Stop the cat. over. Wow. There. They went easy on her because the first thing I'm asking her is where is your legal team? You worth fifteen million dollars. You getting seventy five thousand dollars per episode on Nashville and you got no lawyer? She should have been asked, how did you not know you were signed over full custody? Did she read what she was signing? Sounds like she has some regrets and Jada just feeds into it instead of saying you did what was in the best interest for the child. You were an unfit mom. Klitschko doesn't get enough credit for noticing his child was in danger and removing her from that situation. I have a parenting plan. It outlines in the first section custody. I got 50-50 joint legal and physical custody. In a different interview with People Magazine, she said this. My daughter went to live in between Ukraine and Germany and I got to go over and, and see her as much as I wanted often, but I knew that the best thing that I could do, the hardest thing that I could do, the best thing that I could do for my daughter was to make sure that she was okay and take care of myself um, and make sure that I could be, you know, a good mom to her. So that sometimes means you have to let them, let them go and let them have, she has a beautiful um, life and I was just with her and she's an amazing child and she's smart and she's funny and she for whatever reason, still loves me. This interview leads me to believe that she knew she was signing over custody because it was the right thing to do. There's no mention of her not knowing she was signing over custody in the People Magazine interview. What's not in that interview is when she said, I had no feelings that I wanted to harm my child, but I didn't want to spend time with her. She also admitted going right back to alcohol and pills after the child was born, right? Now, imagine if Vladimir said, I don't want to spend time with my child. Imagine a man saying, I have an alcohol and pill addiction. He will be lucky to see his kid when they turn 18, but because it's a woman, we give her grace. Some people feel sorry for her, but she has an accountability issue because she continues to blame whoever introduced her to Adderall at the tender age of 16, which tells me no accountability whatsoever. About 16, one of the people that I was working with in my inner circle introduced me for the first time to what she called happy pills. And I had no idea what they were, but I know that when I was given one and I was sent on a red carpet, I was like lively and like totally down to answer the questions and a chatterbox. Sure, she may have been given the first Adderall pill, but what about the times you went to Adderall and alcohol after that? You know, who are you blaming for that? She could have fought Klitschko in court, but then all the details of her addiction could have became public record. And then who knows what she's not telling people in these interviews. Furthermore, she probably still would have lost because how is a court going to grant custody to a mother who is openly struggling with depression and opioid and pill addiction? What, what judge is going to sign off that? To give her credit, in an interview, she is absolutely right. Kids do need their moms. Mo moms are important, but they also need mentally stable moms who are free from addiction, who's not going to put themselves or their child in danger. You know, kids do deserve that. So shout out to Klitschko again for removing his child from her custody. When people have mental health or addiction, issues. It's kind of like cancer, you know? You can get the cancer treated, but you never know when it's going to come back. And with addiction and mental health, all it takes is one thing to trigger it, and then she's back on the wagon. Now, there's no way she could win custody back in the court of law, so she went on Red Table Talk trying to win in the court of public opinion. And they kind of did her some justice because they didn't hold her accountable. No one mentioned her alcohol addiction or her mental issues or the fact that, you know, they probably agree that, hey, that was 
in the best interest for your child potentially still could be in the best interest of her child furthermore she can go see her kid whenever she wants to if she would have fought that she would have probably been on supervised visitation and then anytime she see the kid a social worker would have to be present so she avoided that monster but do you think she's capping in the interview do you find her to be sincere i mean i did see her pupils dilated for like the first half but you know i don't want to speculate what i think is still going on but y'all let me know in the comment section and uh make sure you drop a like subscribe and i'll see you in the next video peace